Hi everybody, and welcome to my second of two videos on the CNC MX-10 Motor Marine 35 underwater film camera. And in this video we're going to look at how to do some of the in-depth stuff with this camera. The first one being mounting and unmounting lenses. So here is the fisheye auxiliary lens that goes with this camera. Oh, it's so fisheye. Oh my goodness, that's so fisheye. And so to mount the lens, all you have to do is find where it nests. There we go. And then rotate it clockwise. And the lens is mounted. And if you have the aperture scale and distance scale, you can stick that on top so that it's convenient and easy to read. To unmount the lens, you simply do the opposite. Twist it counter or anti-clockwise. And there's also this handy wrist strap thing that goes over your arm when you're diving or somewhere else, I don't know where. And you can connect your lens to it so that you have your lens with you when you want to swap it out and it's easy to reach. It might also be an ankle strap. It's pretty stretchy. I don't know. Whatever it's for, it's for something. It goes somewhere. Most things in life that can be set up though. When you're using the fisheye lens, there's also an adapter that goes on the back because the fisheye lens covers up part of the viewfinder. It's so large. So you, it comes with, the fisheye comes with this adapter. Just screws into the back like this. You can just leave this on all the time. Honestly, it's uh, not really in the way of anything. You can still look through the viewfinder. And then this, this up here on the top is what you would use to sight with the fisheye lens. And that gives you an idea of what's going to be in the frame with the fisheye lens mounted on your camera. Next thing we're gonna do is load film and see how this works. And this will be exciting because I haven't actually done this before with this camera or with a similar camera. So I don't actually know how this is going to go yet. <laughs> uh, it's going to be exciting. All right, so we're going to first thing we got to do is set the ISO to with the lever switch to either 100 or 400 just like that. Next thing we need to do is set the film winder lever to W for wind. Okay, it is. Now we need to load the film now. So one thing about this camera is you cannot change the film underwater. You have to surface for that. So this is a great camera to have a 36 exposure roll for to maximize the number of photos you can take before surfacing. You just roll the film right into there, pull out your leader. That might, be, might have been a bit much. Drop it in, close it. I'm going to unlock the shutter with the dial on the front. There we go. And now we're at the third frame already, just that quickly. And the flash triggers automatically when there's not enough light. So that's why it was triggering right there. It uses two AA batteries, which are very easy to remove, just pull out. And the camera will not function without two AA batteries in it. So let's see if we can trick the camera into working with the camera back open. You take a picture. Every time you take a photo, the camera automatically advances for you. And you can see over here, that thing does a little shimmy whenever it goes to let you know that it's advancing. Ooh, and we are out of film just that fast. So now we hit rewind, and we rewind the film. We open the back, take out the film, And on the surface, obviously, all of this part being done on the surface, then you can put in a new roll of film and go back to continue your dive. Like I said, this, uh, this camera takes two AA batteries. To change them out is pretty simple. There's not even a battery door on it. You just have to remove them with this cloth strap. 
and typically you wouldn't be doing this with the with gravity working against you. Then to put new batteries in, the first one goes positive side up, the second one goes positive side down, and there you have changed the batteries. And it's pretty nice because they're convenient and easy to get anywhere. So you can see on here that this has a big blue o-ring on it and the big blue o-ring is your storage o-ring your use o-ring is black as uh, if, I, if I understand correctly and so when you're storing it you want to have the blue o-ring on and when you're using it you want to have the black o-ring on so you can remove this with a plastic prying tool as long as it doesn't have any sharp ends on it don't use a screwdriver or a knife or a scissors don't damage the o-ring either the blue or the black and then also try not to use your fingers on them too much because your finger oils can get in there and start to degrade the rubber so once you have them removed you want to check for deformities you want to make sure that the o-ring is the proper shape and also make sure that it's not dirty or damaged and if it has a deformity if it's dirty or if it's damaged any of those conditions can cause the, the cameras back to leak so for the blue o-rings you want to apply the blue cap sealant which is looks like this has a blue cap on it and that helps the o-rings stay pliable and elastic and, and survive for longer after using the camera, especially in the ocean or at the beach, you want to rinse the uh, camera itself, the camera body, in tap water, keeping it sealed the whole time when you do that to make sure that water doesn't get into the camera itself. You also want to, after it's dry and you're swapping out the black o-ring for the blue, you want to uh, rinse the o-rings in water so that you can get some of the, any dirt off of there. The camera can also be soaked for up to a full day if dirt and salt are particularly stubborn. You can just close it, seal it, and let it soak in water for a day to have that water fully dissolve the, uh, the, the salt and dirt. So that's how to use the CNC MX-10 Motor Marine 35. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you have suggestions for future videos, please leave those below. I'm more than happy to make those for you if I have the equipment and technical knowledge. If you'd like to subscribe, then you can find out when I have more videos about cameras and film and digital, digital photography. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching.